testing, one, two, three testing.
and I've been on live streaming. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Okay, members, and um, as I said already, welcome to our special council meeting tonight. Members, do we have any apologies tonight? I'm not being made aware of any, any from the floor. No, okay. Uh, members, uh, any declaration of interest we made if, if required uh, from the floor as we go on. Members, agenda item three tonight then, uh, report on our estimates uh, and 3.1, our estimates 2023 to 24. We'll ask your chief executive, Roger Wilson to bring this report. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, good evening, members. As you have said, Lord Mayor, uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to strike the rate for the financial year 2023-24 in accordance with the regulations that require councils to strike a rate before the 15th of February. Members will be aware that the process this year commenced in June of 2022 and there has been a continual and intensive engagement since uh, that time with members and across the various directorates and departments of the Council. A review and a, an assessment of the current financial year is always a key part of any estimates process, and this was more necessary this year than at any time in the past. And we're all acutely aware that the 22-23 financial year has been very difficult, both operationally and financially, for the Council and as a direct result of the huge uh, impact of the, the energy inflationary pressures arising from the war in Ukraine, our unprecedented pay raise uh, for our 1,400 uh, council employees, and all of this as we attempt to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and revitalize our businesses and services right across the borough. This has clearly put significant financial pressure on our in-year budgets, and has necessitated the allocation of reserves to meet the shortfall in the current year. And consequently, district rates must be increased to reflect these increased costs as a continual reliance on reserves is unsustainable and only financially acceptable for one-off short-term requirements. But despite the various obstacles and complications, members and officers have worked tirelessly to continue to provide quality services to our local ratepayers right throughout the year and have managed to do this whilst maintaining the financial integrity of the organization. A large part of this is going to be down to the implementation of an efficiency program, which will generate a total of 2.6 million in budget savings and cost controls to help bring the rate increase down to a more acceptable level. Members and officers have worked hard to arrive at a proposed rate increase that is a compromise against the numerous asks, the statutory obligations that we have and the finite resources that are available uh, to the Council. The cost pressures for Council for the incoming year continue to include those increasing energy costs. There are increasing staff costs and a further significant cut to the rate support grant. In addition to the rates process, I know that members are continually talking to constituents on a daily basis and senior officers have engaged with our Business Partnership Alliance uh, to keep the business community engaged. In striking our rate, we have a responsibility to ensure that rises are measured and recognize both the macro and microeconomic conditions. And for 2022 or 2023-24, between minimizing the burden on ratepayers and continuing to provide funding for frontline services that are already stretched to cover the energy and staffing cost pressures, supporting the economy and local communities and creating space for future investment within the borough. The proposed rate also confirms the Council's commitment to supporting recovery and growth across the borough while minimising the cost to the local rate pair, not just for next year, but in the years to come. As Chief Executive and as the Accounting Officer under the Local Government Finance Act, I'm legally required to be satisfied that the estimates presented should provide adequate financial resources to support the running costs of the organisation for the incoming year. To provide assurance to members on the robustness of the revenue estimates and the adequacy of the Council's reserves position as part of the rate setting process. The budget presented tonight meets these requirements. In previous years, we have always strived to ensure that our rate is below or at the rate of inflation. 
and the proposed rate tonight is significantly below uh, the current rate of inflation. Members are also reminded that whilst we are considering the district rate and we are endeavouring to keep it as low as possible, this is only one component of the rate spill. There is no indication as to what the regional rate is likely to be or when the Secretary of State will announce it. This element of our citizens' rate bills is outside of the Council's control. We are required to strike the rate by the 15th of February, and I'm aware that most other councils have struck their rates, and if agreed tonight, the rate that is being proposed will be one of the lowest in Northern Ireland. Lord Mayor, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the Estimates and the Efficiencies Working Group, especially the Chairman, who has had a significant number of additional meetings to, uh, to oversee uh, this year, to thank all of the party leaders, the Governance, Resources and Strategy Committee and members from across all of the political parties for their engagement, for their scrutiny, their advice and their support during the estimates process. There has been a long and open and honest conversation which have helped us enormously getting to the point where all parties can support the proposed rates increase for next year. There's a considerable amount of work that goes into the process and a wide range of officers are involved at all levels in the organisation. And I would like to express my thanks uh, to those staff across the organization for their hard work, especially in uh, EMT heads of department. And in particular, uh, Charlene as deputy chief executive, Dominic as head of finance, and the teams that work behind them in the finance and the program management office. There are too many of them to mention and it would be unfair to do so, but uh, we pay a tribute to the hard work that they have put in over the last uh, six months or so. So Lord Mayor, the rate before members tonight is a recommendation that's coming from the Special Governance Committee meeting last week, and it equates to an increase of 4.83% for the domestic rate and 7.57% for the non-domestic rate. And this is on average a 5.96% increase in the rate. Lord Mayor, the report is recommended from the Governance and Resources Committee to Council for adoption and approval. Thank you, Roger, and I'd also like to pass on my thanks to all those involved in the estimates working group, the governance committee, and especially the chair, had a lot of meetings there as well, and all the officers and those who input on. So members who heard the report, are we a proposer and the seconder for this report? And Sir Michael. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And thank you to Dominic and Liam and all the team in finance for all the hard work over the past number of months. And also to colleagues on the Estimates Working Group for all their work over the months. It's been a hard slog um, to get to this place, but I think that we've got to a very, very um, impressive figure in terms of our rates increase, and I'm happy to propose. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mackle and Alderman Twible. Lord Mayor, I'm very happy to concur with everything that has been said already, and I'm very happy to second the proposal. Thank you, Alderman Twible. Members, have we all agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Baxter. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, for letting me speak on this, I think. First of all, I think we do agree reluctantly. We're going to have to agree to this rise tonight, I think. None of us want to see a rise in our rates, particularly at this cost of living crisis and at this, this economic time that we're in. And I suppose that's part of the problem that, that we have to make the rises whenever we have all these added costs um, this year in particular. Um, but I do want to pay tribute and give my thanks and our party's thanks to Dominic and Liam in particular, and the whole team in finance, who have worked tirelessly um, over over many months um, to, to get us down to a rate that is maybe more palatable than probably it should be. I have got to that um, stage <coughs> probably has been very, very difficult. Um, we see our reserves sort of decimated and we see all our budgets cut right across the organization. Um, you know, when it's gonna it's gonna prove very difficult over the next over the next 12 months. Um, 
in terms of, of services and trying to put this council on a, on a sound foot and going forward financially, but all credit to the officers and can I pay tribute to my colleague as well, Alderman Woodry, and, and chairing those those meetings, and there were many of them, and some lengthy ones, and he certainly was across um, all of the detail to try and get down to the rate um, where we are. I think it's it's fair to say there's decisions made over the last 12 months that, that our party certainly didn't um, agree to that have maybe added to, to the problem we find ourselves in. But I think certainly moving forward, um, this is the start of the process. And as I mentioned to the Deputy Chief Executive before, you know, the process starts over the next 12 months. And I know there's an election coming and, and some of us mightn't be here and that's that's up to the rate pair. Um, but certainly we can't continue. We just simply can't continue to put the burden on the rate pair um, every time there's a bit of a financial crisis. We are a huge organization. We have many assets. We need to look at new and innovative ways to try and raise revenue. We simply can't come every April and just wherever the shortfall is, just lump it onto the rate pair. We have to change the way we do things. When I came into this um, first organization 11 years ago and then laterally to, to whenever the super council um, was formed, we've always talked and members right across the chamber that you know we have to run the council like a business. But sadly, we don't run it like a business and that's in members' hands. Um, decisions taken in this place that aren't fiscally responsible, they're not financially responsible, but they're maybe popular. And sometimes in this position, you have to take on popular decisions too. So it's just to, you know, put that in record. Um, all our thanks to the team. Um, we have a palatable raise, but it's only the start of a process because, you know, we have all this to do again next year and it's going to be more difficult year on year, but we have to look at new ways on how to raise revenue. And members, whoever's back in the chamber, whether I'm here or whether I'm not, or whether other members are here or not, we have to probably look and make more probably unpopular decisions. Um, we can't just <coughs> always lump it under the rate pair. We make no apology for standing up for the rate pair um, tonight. Um, but just on behalf of our party, um, just again, um, thanks to the officers, because it's been a very difficult process, I think, for us all, and they've worked extremely hard. Thank you. Thank you, Owner and Baxter, Councillor Nicholson. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And uh, like others before me, I, I want to thank, um, obviously, the, the whole team um, that worked so hard um, in what has been, let's be honest, uh, a lot of unforeseen uh, pressures within these 12 months, um, be it energy, be it inflation, be it other things. Um, and, and I think um, when we, we first started, uh, we, we, were, we were talking double figures. I think that was what's being reported in the press. But look, it, it's shown with you know everybody at the wheel um, working hard. And again, I want to pay tribute on behalf of our group on the working group, uh, as has been said before, um, uh, Councillor Mutri. Is it all removed? I'm not sure, but shared it very well and, and obviously was over the detail and we all worked well together because let's be honest, as we've seen probably in other councils over the last week or two, the race process can be the, the, the subject of political mischief. And I, I, I thank this chamber tonight for not allowing that to happen. And I think what we have is, as, 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 as Alderman Baxter said, is palatable given the, 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 uh, the, the situation we, we find ourselves in. And, and in my mind, it, it's reasonable because it does allow us to continue as civic leaders within our borough. And it was one thing that I was very much um, behind when we were going through this process that we didn't strip ourselves down to, 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 the, to the bare bones that if something does happen out there within um, um, society, be it funding, whatever, we're able to move on it and also still support our communities and, 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 our, and our businesses. And as, I, and as I say, allow the um, the borough to grow. Um, the other thing is I wanted to mention is that we we haven't cut services. Um, we went through a, a very, very stringent efficiency service, which has already been mentioned by Alderman Baxter, which of course we will have to uh, obviously revisit. And there's no doubt um, we're all in the same page as there can be new ways of working on this thing. And it's something we can look at. 
but I think given um, some of the rates we've seen struck throughout Northern Ireland, given the rate of inflation, and as Roger has already said, we're, we're, we're not in control of the, re the regional rate, but we can, an ABC Council can say we have, we're providing the rate players best value and um, for going forward. And I think, as I say, um, our, our domestic rate um, is way, way below what a lot of people were were expecting to see when you compare what was going on. So, look, finally, I just want to thank again all the officers, Liam, Dominic, everybody. I know it's been a difficult time and, 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 and all the members in the chamber. And hopefully we can move forward and continue to, to grow this borough um, over the next 12 months. As as Alderman Baxter says, if we're, if we're back in the chamber, well, we'll find out that in May. So thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nicholson. Okay, members, uh, 3.2 report from Dominic, uh, Treasury Management Statement. Dominic, we'll bring you up. Oh, sorry, Alderman Midray, is your lights on? Sorry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, can I just say, as the one who chaired Governance Committee this year, I have seen firsthand that the amount of work that has been put in by our directors and officers across this council. And I want to put on record my thanks to the officers for the, in relation to the rates and the estimates process, and particularly to Dominic Donnelly, to Liam McStravick and their teams, and to Martina McNulty, who acted as go-between on occasions. We recognize that this has been another difficult year for our residents and indeed for this council. We can do nothing without the rate pair, because it is they who provide the resources for this council to deliver the services, whether it, that is the business rate pair or the private rate pair. This is why we must take steps as we move forward to ensure that we are delivering the best service in the best and most effective way forward. A huge amount of effort has been made to ensure that the rate burden on our constituents is mitigated as much as we can, however, to continue to salami slice budgets and to use reserves is not a sustainable way to move forward. This council holds a significant number of empty properties and some that have ceased to be assets and have become expensive liabilities, particularly with the rising costs of insurance, heating, electricity. And we must move to rationalize our estate and to reduce the recurring costs in these liabilities and also work to achieve the maximum amount of income by the sale of some of them. We must now realize that we cannot continue to run our facilities and services in the way that they have been done across council. I regularly see large amounts of duplication in the provision of services and of spaces. Take events, for example. There is no central coordination for events across the borough, which means that each department ends up spending more time and resources than is necessary on delivering, delivering events. We need to rectify that issue. We have sites, and I have pointed this out before, that run huge deficits, and we have to accept that this cannot continue to operate like this. We must seek other operating models. Members, as well as officers, must face up to this. As a party, we will not shy from taking from having to make difficult and challenging decisions if it means delivering better services and value for the rate payers. Tinkering around the ages will no longer cut it. Transformation of services, new ways of working, adapting to emerging challenges will all have to be front and central of everyone's agenda in this place from top to bottom. The people of the borough deserve high quality services and continuing as we are will only ensure we feel in our duty as elected members and as a council. We must get to, get to grips with the issues in environmental services for once and for all. We have to work to ensure that all our facilities in leisure, community and other departments are working together and delivering for the ratepayer. We must tackle the issues of staff morale, absence levels, and speed up recruitment processes. All of these things are impacting our ability to deliver good quality, efficient services. 
Lord Mayor, we on these benches are up for this. I know EMT and officers understand this needs to be done. I just hope that others in the chamber are prepared to make the decisions that we know are required. Our repair prayers deserve the best and our party are prepared to deliver better for everyone in this borough. Tonight's rate rise, as the chief executive said, is reasonably low, but we still have the central element to be put to it. So therefore, it may not be as good as we would like it to be on this occasion. But let's move forward together to try and to deliver for the rate pairs, the people who put us here and the people who finance this council. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Honourable Mitri. And members, 3.2, Treasury Management Statement. Dominic, I'll bring you in then. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, good evening, members. So uh, just firstly, just to say um, a big thanks to all members for your kind words uh, this evening. It's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty long process, and for all of your support uh, throughout that uh, process. Uh, members, you know, I think we've got to, to, to a pretty good place uh, tonight. Um, alongside that, in terms of setting the rate, we also um, have to uh, approve a number of other uh, documents that are required under the Local Government Finance Act and uh, to comply with SIPFA's uh, Prudential and Treasury Management Codes. Uh, these are the MRP Statement, the Treasury Management Strategy, the Capital Strategy, uh, Prudential Indicators for the incoming financial year. And we've also taken the opportunity this year to update the Council's medium-term financial plan, and that's also attached. So it's recommended that members approve these uh, documents and the including the medium-term financial plan uh, this evening, members, and happy to take any questions on that. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, members, we're a proposer and a seconder for Dominic's report. Councillor Nicholson. Yeah, uh, Lord Mayor, thank you. And thanks, Dominic, and happy to propose, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nicholson and Councillor Magal. Yes, happy to second, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Magal. Members, we all agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Members, uh, I have no other relevant business. I know we have another committee starting here very shortly, so we want to thank you all for your attendance tonight, and we wish you all a good evening. Thank you, members.